So you tried exporting your rigged character to Unreal 5 and you're getting all sorts of errors and you have no idea what's going on. Not a problem. Okay, if you're getting these problems, that usually means that your skeleton does not meet the epic compliance standard of the Unreal Default Mannequin. Now, you are technically free to just ignore these errors and use your own custom rig if you want, but as your instructor, I feel it is my responsibility to at least try and warn you why that might be a bad idea. So let's just talk about why you would want to use the Unreal 5 base rig as your character's base skeleton. Well, it really comes down to three things, speed, flexibility, and scalability. You have to understand that the the Unreal 5 mannequin is like the entire Epic community's fun little project car. All of the character animation features that are developed for Unreal are developed for the standard Unreal 5 rig. For example, these are demonstration projects that come from the Unreal Project Samples file, free for everyone. And these are all features that you can use or add in your game to your character if you want. Now my personal favorite is this procedural automatic hit detection system, which allows your character to take directional animation damage depending on where and how hard you got hit. If you hit the head from here, it moves back. If you hit the head from here, it moves forward. If I hit the hand, it'll get sent flying. If I hit the shoulder, that'll go flying instead. And all of this is procedural. None of these getting hit movements are actually animated. They are all generated using the physics in combination with math and collision data. But this system only works for your character if it is using the standard Unreal 5 rig. If your character is not using the Unreal 5 rig, you would either have to recreate this hit collision system yourself or manually animate getting hit from every possible direction. You know, getting hit to the left, getting hit to the right, getting hit in the hand, getting hit in the shoulder, getting hit in the legs, and you'd have to do that for every direction, which would easily cost you hundreds of hours, thousands of different animations, and all for something that could have literally just been a click of a button and just drag your character into the system. Another cool feature that I really like is this procedurally generated pointing animations. Let's say you wanted your character to point in a direction. Depending on where the character is, it might be pointing in different things. Well, with this feature, the pointing animation will automatically adjust itself based on the position of the target. And again, this is all procedural. You have one pointing animation and then you use this feature so it automatically adjusts itself to point at the target correctly without you having to manually animate 75 different pointing animations that could cover all possible areas. And there's literally hundreds of these kind of features, but most of them only work with the Unreal 5 skeleton. Something else that you will not have if you are using your own rig is access to all of the community-made animations for Unreal 5. Now let's say you're making a game and you're halfway through, but for some reason your animator gets really sick, they have to go to surgery, and they're not going to be able to work for the next two months. Well, in that case, if you are using a custom rig, unless someone on your team knows how to retarget things, you're probably screwed. But if your team is using the Unreal 5 rig from the beginning, beginning, you can literally just go to the marketplace, drop 40 bucks, and get all the animations you need for the rest of the game dragged and dropped to your character in less than 5 seconds. And in my opinion, this is actually the biggest benefit to using the default rig. Your character is compatible with literally the entire Unreal Enterprise selection. It saves a lot of time and can come in really handy whenever you don't have an animator on deck. And because a lot of games were made with Unreal 5, you also have access to a lot of animations from other projects like the Paragon animations, or the Park core animations from UEFN, or the shooting and strafing animations from Lyra. And another nice bonus that you get if you use the default rig is essentially all the characters become interchangeable with the click of a button. If I want to replace the starting character in the Unreal 5 demo, I can just drag my character straight into it and within three seconds start playing as my character. If I find a cool character on the marketplace that I like, I can even replace my character with that character and I don't have to do any rigging, any weight painting, or any retargeting. The only way you could have access to any of the stuff that I just talked about with your own rig is if you go through the trials and tribulations of learning how to retarget. Now, Unreal does give you a robust set of tools that you can use to retarget, and they're pretty good. But to learn to use them can be tricky, and if you make any mistakes, it's fairly common to get really weird glitches like the neck being too long, or the feet going through the ground, or the feet not touching the ground. And when you try and add community features on top of this, you'll probably get even more glitches, and nobody's really going to be able to help you because most people in the Unreal community only operate with the default rig. So that's kind of the big problem is when you are using your own custom rig, you are now pretty much the only person who can fix it if something goes wrong. But technically it is possible. So if you're cool with the idea of retargeting all your characters for the rest of your life, then yeah, technically it is an option. But like I said, if you get stuck, you're pretty much on your own. Now, if I have successfully convinced you to use the default mannequin skeleton for your character, you might be wondering how you would even get your hands on it. 
So for those of you who would like to know, here is how. We actually have a really awesome member in our Discord community who has gone ahead and made a Blender file which contains the rigged Unreal 5 mannequin already set up with Rigify. And he has a video that shows you how to adjust it and how to fix it to your own character. And even some cool scripts that can help you mirror from one side to the other. He explains it pretty well, so I'll leave a link to that video in the pinned comment. But for those of you who would like to just build your own rig that doesn't revolve around Rigify, here is how you properly import and export that into Blender. You can get the FBX file directly from Unreal 5, but before you bring it into Blender, you'll want to go over on the right, click the cone, and set the unit scale from 1 to 0 0.01. Then import the FBX, and at the bottom, make sure you set primary bone axis to X and secondary bone axis to negative Y. Perfect. Now I know seeing the bones oriented like this hurts your soul, but trust me, if you actually try and change these orientations, or if you try and do the fix bone orientation inside of Blender, it might look better, but it's actually now secretly broken. If you export it back to Unreal and try and drag animations into it, you're gonna see something like this. So that's why it's really important that you do not change the rotations of these bones. And the reason why we have the import and export settings set to X and negative Y is because even if it looks a little bit weird, it gives us a consistent down change orientation. So we have a little bit of a coherent visualization for how the skeleton is supposed to be structured. And this makes it easier to adjust and manipulate in Blender. Ideally though, if you have access to Maya, the rig will naturally make a lot more sense visually. Now, if you get this funny fade, you can fix that by pressing N, go to view and multiply the clip and begin by 100. Now, at this point, you're ready to start adding any rig controls you want or edit the skeleton to adjust it for your character. So here are the rules. When you are adjusting the rig, you can add things, but you cannot delete things. If your character has a tail and wings, feel free to just add bones for the tail or the wings and you'll be fine. What you cannot do is decide, hey, my character doesn't need finger bones or my character doesn't need all six spine bones and start deleting them. If you delete any of the original bones, you are probably going to get errors. But you can add whatever you want. So if you wanted to add jiggle physics for your characters, you can add boob bones and rig them the way we did for all of our other female characters. Now, you can move bones to stretch to different locations depending on your character, but you should not change the orientation or the rotation of the joints. If you do, once again, the rig will break, and you will probably get some weird errors or glitches. Now, a lot of these problems can be solved if you just model the character around the rig in the first place. Regardless, once you've got the bones in the right places for your character, you can either weight paint it yourself or you can use a weight paint transfer from the mannequin to your character. I have a video tutorial showing you how to do that. Link in the pinned comment. All right, so let's say you finish rigging your character, the weight painting is perfect, now you want to export this from Blender to Unreal. Well, to do that, click your rig, shift click your mesh, then go to File Export FBX, set it to Just Mesh and Armature, Smoothing to Face, and if you have modifiers, you can apply them, otherwise don't. And the most important thing here is to make sure that the primary and the secondary bone axis are the same as when you imported them. So we want X and negative Y. Usually it doesn't hurt to leave the only deformed bones on. Take off all leaf bones because they're dumb and waste space. Probably take off NLA strips too. And change simplify to 0 0.01. Export, you're done. Now if you go to Unreal and you try to import the character, set it to the mannequin, and bam, look, no errors. Congratulations, you did it. Now let's just say that you wanted to make some new animations and you want to send them to your character in Unreal. Well, you can do the normal FBX export method that I just showed you, but Cly has created a really cool script that you can use that just handles all the setting stuff for you. To use it, you just need to save the Blender file somewhere you'll remember, make a new window, go to the text editor, new, copy this code, paste it here, and if you hit run now, there should be a file called FBX wherever you save this Blender file, and it will contain your animation. From here, all you gotta do is import the animation to Unreal 5, and it should give you no errors as long as it's set to the default mannequin. Now, the cool thing about having your character rigged with the proper skeleton is from this point on, you don't even need your character to make animations. Remember, all animations for this rig are interchangeable. So if you make an animation with the Rigify mannequin in Blender, you can just export that and drag it to your character. You do not need to animate with your character in the Blender file. 
And you can do the same technique from other software too, like Cascader. As long as you're animating with the UE5 mannequin, when you export it and drag it onto your character, it should work perfectly fine. And part of the reason this works so well is because the default mannequin has some special IK bones that help to tell Unreal how the hands and feet are supposed to interact with the animation. This IK hand bone, for example, might look a bit weird if you've never seen it before. It's kind of gluing the left and right hands together. But what it's really doing is tracking the distance between the left and the right hand. And that information is used to automatically adjust things if you're going to drag and drop animations from characters that have different size bone proportions. This IK foot bone is the same thing. Having these bones is very important to making sure that when your character swaps animations with another, that the feet aren't going through the ground or interacting with the environment properly. So do not delete these bones. Regardless, that is the gist for why the Unreal 5 mannequin is so useful to have and what troubles you might encounter if you do not use it. I hope this information was useful for you. And if you have any further questions, feel free to drop by our Discord and ask in the help forums. Regardless, as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.